early 90s or mid 90s when uh, when the when the rave scene came along i think um a generation got skipped because yeah. um the main writers probably weren't painting at the time and the whole the rave era kind of wiped a lot of people's yeah, attention away yeah didn't it? yeah it did it did and uh and that's what i'm sorry about in a way because i mean even i got sucked into that eight era mm. you know um a lot of writers got sucked into that era. In fact, yeah, yeah, a lot of writers did. Killer Keller official dot com. You need the Kellervision app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Ah, bomb. <laughs> fucking two shakes. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct. We ain't in central London. We're in fucking Sheffield. Big up yourselves. Hold tight, Sheffield group. Um, big up graffitikings.co.uk all the time. If you can check the Kellervision app, you can get it free. Download iPhone, Android for your street culture needs. We have a legend in the house. Yo, they're just flying through like, you know. The answers is blowing in the wind of the former podcasting, the OG. That's inside the place. What are you saying, my brother? Yes, how are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all good, all good. A little bit tired, but I'm good. Yeah? You've, yeah, been, you've been busy at the moment? You've been hanging about? Yeah, I've just been uh, doing a paint job, actually. But um, mm. I'm here now. Yes. Yeah, I'm here now. So. Could you ever imagine, like, I mean, you know, we're... We, we go into retrospects and such, but did you ever think in the early years of death, you ever thought for a second, you'd be at this place now, this juncture in your career, you know, in painting jobs and being busy and, you know, I was I was very privy to the mini doc last week where, you know, boys were out, do you know what I mean? It's, you um, know... We'd... Well, to be fair, um, no. I mean, I've always been doing little jobs here and there when mm. I was starting off, mm. but... Now things just seem to like pick up and people just want stuff off me now all the time. So uh, that's the way things are going at the moment. Mm. Mm. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think there's an ebbs and flows to it? Like you're on top due to certain circumstantial things, you know, the, the, the lockdown or maybe people's interest in graph. Do these things come into play? I think it might be a bit of both, to be fair. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of both, to be fair. Yeah, it's mm. definitely a bit of both because... Um, I mean, the start of lockdown, that's when things really start to pick up. Mm -hmm. um, people wanting to do canvases, jobs, yeah. everything, really. Yeah, yeah, it's just the whole game suddenly switches. People have got a bit more passive income that they want to... Mm, yeah, that's it, because nobody's been able to go nowhere. They've got to spend the money on something, so <laughs> they'd rather spend it on me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not complaining. Um, in, in the short, I mean... <laughs> knowing your work for a long time uh -huh. only has it come to light how fucking chilled you are as a person do you know what I mean like you're fucking so passive and chilled well I, everyone's always said I'm chilled and laid back I'm not laid back I'm nearly le <laughs> nearly laying down. well I'm chilled look how look like I am now. chilling now yeah so but um, yeah I've chilled out a lot in uh, from like when I was younger because was young being young was it different was there a different mentality back then? Yeah, because uh, when I was, like, younger, we all followed that New York uh, trend, you know what I mean? Everyone were just mm. out for themselves, really. I mean, I wasn't working. Mm. Um, I had to get paint somehow, mm. um, either from shops or off other writers. And that was the order of the day? Yeah. By de by, by default, you, yeah. subs you subscribed to that? that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I mean, we just wanted to be like as street as possible, really. I mean, mm. uh, that's what graffiti writers were like in New York, and uh, mm. that's how we acted, really. And um, we just thought it was, well, the Bible. Mm. It, uh, it sounds crass, but when someone said to me, the hip hop culture was a, a cheap to enter culture in the sense that. If you were good at poetry mm -hmm. and writing, you could be an MC. If you were good at art and you had to facilitate, you could facilitate having the paint, you could be a graffiti writer. Mm. How much of that reigned true of its time? 
did it feel like everybody that were, were denied a skill or were denied the opportunity to show a skill, this became like the immediate go-to scene? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, back in the day, um, well, graffiti were frowned upon. Um, you couldn't get places to paint or or funding anywhere. Yeah. Really. Um, I mean, there was like a couple of outlets out there. What um, what might help you? Mm. But um, other than that, it was a, it was a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Definite struggle. Yeah. Um, I mean. No, no kind of help from a. Was it a class thing? Do you think you, you know the whole attitude of you know education and. Yeah, because um, I mean, like, because like graffiti was it was it was because it was new back then. Mm. Um, the term graffiti, everyone just saw it as a negative. Yeah, I mean, some like um, some people do still. I mean, the older generation. I mean, because being the younger generation, I mean, the older generation was like from probably thirty upwards mm. when, we, when we were young, and mm. everybody was like um, against graffiti, but like. Uh, then everyone was into graffiti. It was like uh, from our generation, mm. and um, yeah. and seeing graffiti around, everybody wanted to do it or be a part of it. And even if they weren't good at art, you know, they went, they had a tag or went out bombing. Yeah, almost like in the in the theory to practice of tag to throw up to dub to piece to mm -hmm. you know. The, um, it kind of had like a whole, it has a whole lineage that is generational. And the the young people of its time were just straight tagging, but they were developing the tags yes, exactly. the whole time. Uh -huh. So the more people that were doing it, the more that was learned quicker. Yeah, That's bonkers, isn't it, when you yeah, think of it? Yeah, well, it's a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone, like um, you start off with your tag, you perfect your tag, you get your hand style, uh, then you go on to like throw-ups and... And uh, then to piecing and stuff like that. But some people just go straight into um, mm. doing pieces and stuff like that. They don't bother going out uh, street bombing or anything like that anymore. Mm. That, that, that to me seems like a lack of foundation. Like the idea of like bypassing a really important mm. aspect. Yeah. Like tagging or, you know, even doing straight letters. You yeah. know, just real mm. things that people think is so basic, but it's actually fucking really hard to do. Mm. But they also miss out on the fun of doing that, going out and bombing. You know what I mean? Because the, there's the, there's that ele there's that element um, of doing stuff like that. What mm. still appeal to me to this day? Yeah. You know, uh, I still want to go out bombing. You know, you get that buzz from it. You know? So um, if the opportunity came along, I'd, I'd I'd do it. You would do it even now. Don't yeah, you? yeah, I'll do it even now. Yeah, mm. I still go out there and do stuff. I still do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still busy. Um, talk to me about talk to me about your because obviously hip, hip hop came through the influence and all the the, the, the New York scene. You mm -hmm. know, from Buffalo Girls to yeah. you know Subway Art. You know all these classic you know era this era defining mm -hmm. moments. How did you get into like what was it that suddenly sparked your interest on such a level? Well, hip hop um, started me break dancing and stuff like that because I used to break dance. Like um, I started off break, break dancing. Really? Back in, uh, yeah, I yeah. started off break dancing. Uh, we had a crew. What's the crew called? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Nuclear force. Nuclear force. Yeah, and then we changed it to. Um, well, that was the first name, uh, Nuclear Force, and then we changed it to. Oh gosh, let me think about what. The, Oh, God, I can't remember right now. It's such a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going into the recesses, the deepest <laughs> recesses. <laughs> but this is, what, this is great because, you know, I think with a podcast like this, it's really important to create. <clears throat> and, I, you know, I'm sure you've done things like this in the past, but I think for a lot of people, what we saw in Sheffield in the, like, mid-90s, mm -hmm. there's no smoke without fire. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you were part of the original story yeah. of why Sheffield became like the top mm. of its game of, at a time, right? Well, the, the thing about it was, I mean, when I first started doing graph, 
there was just a handful of writers in Sheffield. There was, um, I used to go out with um, this guy called Jazz Two. He would like me write, and man, we used to go out bombing. And then uh, when we were, when we ran out bombing, we used to see um, little tags by um, Marlow, Chiefry, Kato, um, mm. and then we didn't know who they were. Mm. We used to, we just thought, right, we'll just put drips on their tags. We used to draw drips on the tags. We really wound them up. <laughs> but we, and then we found out that these guys were like older than us. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, like, oh we, shit. We, we were like 15, 16. Uh, um, and these guys were like, well, they're only a few years older than us. They would have been about 18, 19. Mm. But they were still older than us. And uh, and plus there was, um, a, there was a breakdance crew called Smack 19. They had um, graffiti artists in there. Nice. Um, Sulfie and Bernie. Um, and uh, they got together with um, a guy called um, Foster and uh, Easel, and they did a piece. So um, I bet there's some heads out there right now that are just like, yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. These 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 yeah. moments don't go away in people's minds easily. Yeah, yeah, and they they went under the name of King Four. King Four. Yeah. So um, after. Um, going out bombing and we eventually met up eventually met k2 and g3 and and that yeah. uh, so we we made a crew just to um he he never went in it because he wasn't really like piecing so the me marlo k2 and g3 we made a crew called the elite artist mm. Mm, so um, wow so that was was that the first inception of like crew yeah. Graph. Wow. Yeah. So there was a what year was that? What year was that? This was uh, 85. 85. <laughs> wow. I, start, I started in 83. Um, so, yeah, 85. But me and Jazz 2, there were a few others, but we were just a crew, really. We went out painting. We were called aerosol mm -hmm. artists, and there must have been about 10 of us in it. Yeah. But not all of them painted like we did. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, so like uh, elite artists came along, and then um, we got we we found an outlet in the uh, Sheffield Polytechnic. They had a students union. What was interested in what we was doing? Polytechnic. Yeah. Why? Mm. So um, they started uh, setting things up for us, we, like cause uh, they said, "Oh, do you want to like?" Uh, we asked them if the, we could like sort of like do an exhibition. Mm -hmm. So they funded that. Wow. Yeah. So um, proper. This is when like Buntlack um, was um, just coming in. We just, uh, we just... Buntlack was a thing, <laughs> <laughs> a real thing. And like, um, and, and we did a piece all in Bunt. We did this pieces all in Buntlack, really, and uh, we did an exhibition. And then after the exhibition, we decided to run a competition, a graffiti competition, to see what crews. Um, you know, out there, yeah. want to showcase uh, what they want to do and everything. And um, we did a competition, so we had, had it down at the um, Nelson Mandela building, which was a big hall, like, um, where we could uh, mm. put events on. Nice. Uh, and we ran a competition, and crews from all over Sheffield came in, uh, and painted. Because, like, um, at the time, we were, like, bombing, and we started to see loads of different... Tags popping up here and there and all over and mm. um, on buses and on walls everywhere. So um, when we had this comp um, competition, it sort of like brought everybody together. Yeah. Uh, so like people like could put names to tags. Mm. Mm -hmm. So um, and that's how um, our that's how I formed um, our crew um, ACT, which was back then known as All City Taggers. Before it's before it's known now as an awesome crime team. Wow! Because like when everybody went all city, um, uh, this was the next step to, to be, you know, to be called awesome crime team. And just building outwards. I mean, it just sounds, sounds so organic. But it, I'm sure it was like you were saying about meeting writers and their names for the first time. That must have just that that moment alone must have been like career defining. Mm. Like what? Yeah, because like. Uh, I mean, uh, the only form of sh um, transport in Sheffield was the, the bus routes. And um, we used to see tags on buses. Yeah. I mean, it's very co it, it was a very complex 
um, mm. system, the bus system, because he had, um, we had yards where they put certain types of buses mm. what ran on certain routes. So, um, like, uh, my particular bus route, it ran on Mazer's bus route and it ran on Spreader's, Spread's bus route. Hmm. And they're the tags are what I used to see. And then, um, and I was like, why are these guys tagging on my buses? <laughs> <laughs> these are my motherfucker. <laughs> this is my, this is, these are my, this is my bus line. So, um, yeah, so like, uh, you had my bus route and then you had um, Miss One's bus route, which um, port in, I think it was Harry's, Harry's yards. Like okay. Was, so like, his buses ran on certain other routes. They never ran on my route, yeah. so I never saw his, unless I went on one of his buses. Mm. So, um, but you get other bus routes, what run in other different, different places. So um, in order to like, get on their buses, we had to like catch him, but Catching buses in Sheffield, it only cost two pence to get on a bus. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right, <laughs> adult, yeah. Adult fare were five p. so... <laughs> you see? <laughs> you used to just catch <laughs> buses all day. Yeah, and just to get busy. Yeah. What's the deal with, just out of curiosity, the, the tram thing here? I mean, I, obviously I knew Sheffield had trams, but they never got, really got hit, did they? Trams weren't really a thing. Well, no, because, what, I mean, with the tram systems, what is, if it gets hit... It gets parked up where it is and they'll come out and buff it. Straight away? Yeah. Oh, that's pointless, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's hard to get in the... Um, although it's been done, people have been... Well, European writers have been in there and, uh, yeah. and painted them, but they don't run them. Yeah, it just doesn't serve any purpose, does it? No. Hmm. So it's... Uh, so not even back in the day, there wasn't really a... Well, the thing about it was... Oh, I can go on and on and on <laughs> now, um, that's all right, it's your podcast. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and let the games begin. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't even talk about the student games when you came to Sheffield because that more, more or less um, nearly wiped out graffiti in Sheffield. Really? Yeah. What happened? Uh, the student games came to Sheffield and there was just a mad yeah. clean up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they probably did the same in Manchester when they had the um, student games in Manchester. And the Olympics went in 2011, 2012. Yeah. 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 Did that happen in London? Yeah, in London, well? yeah. Yeah, so they, they were bl they were locking people up. They yeah. were there was it was nuts, yeah. Yeah. So to my um, understanding, of course. Yeah, they, they can't have um, you know a big event like that coming to Sheffield and seeing it, seeing Sheffield how it was because we got labelled as the worst bomb city in Europe. Really? At one stage, yeah. Because um, you couldn't go anywhere in Sheffield and, uh, and not see Graf. It doesn't matter if you went to a rich area or a poor area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bombed the same way. What? I can't even imagine that to that extent, where you, you're the worst city for bombing in the world, in Europe. Mm. Because, like, um, everybody was bombing back then, even the, even the milkman. <laughs> we're, we're bombing, we were tagging up. Every, everybody would. There was like, I mean, because there were so many. It's just writers. a thing, yeah. Yeah, there were so many writers. I mean, like, um, people talk about. I've talked to um, writers about writers now, and they're like, I've never heard that name before. It's impossible to know everybody. Mm -hmm. we were, um, tagging back in the 80s. So, um, I mean, like, as soon as you stepped off the train and went through the bus station, it, you, it, it was just like annihilated everywhere. Wow. Done. Mm. Every, yeah. Everyone was fighting for space, really. Mm. What did the council think of that time? You know, I mean, obviously they didn't. They, they frowned upon it, but it was out of control. Yeah, it was out of control. But they couldn't do anything. I mean, uh, like you know, back in the day, there weren't no CCTV or anything. There mm. weren't no mobile phones. Mm. If somebody saw you tagging, they'll have to run to a um, telephone box. And by the time they've done that, you've yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. So like probably tagged the telephone box as well. See, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, we used to just bomb everything. Really, does that mentality? Does that mentality stay with you? And because things, environments change. Circuit, like you say, it's, it's, cameras suddenly come into play. Mm. All these different techniques and ways in which they can, you know, track certain things as time has developed. But the mentality of a writer is same shit, different day. Yeah. At what point do you really start feeling the tightening of the, 
of the noose as far as, well, we've got to be a bit more careful. Because there's one minute there's fucking loads and loads and loads of writers, and next mm. minute you, can, you start separating the men from the boys, don't you? And then mm. you see the noose tightening on certain... I think... Gosh, um, it was an era when... Uh, when Fister was just coming around. I sort of, like, dropped back because um, things were get, just getting a little bit... Um, I thought things were getting a little bit... Um, Hot. On top then. Mm. But Fister came along and uh, sort of, like, drawed the heat away from me a little bit. Really? Mm. Really? Did you... But up till that point, you would... Because, I mean, I've seen photos of you, in, you know, you, internationally. Like, you've, you've been about, like... We to just suddenly jump to Fister. I'm like, hold on a minute, wait a minute, break no, some minute. No, let's re just rewind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fister. Um... So you were, so you were active. You were doing your thing, and you mm. were going to, across countries, international, yeah. smoozing with. Yeah, the... I went to New York. Yeah. Um, in fact, I still go to New York now. Um, I first went to New York in '84, as I was getting into hip hop. Yeah, yeah. So I was into break dancing and hip hop, um, into graph, but. Not as much into graph. I was more or less into like hip hop at the time. Yeah. Um, so I've been obviously New York, uh, and I stopped in Brooklyn, New York, and I'd seen the trains, like caught the subways a few times, and noticed all the graph on them, and I'm like, what's all this? Because I've never seen graph on trains. Mm. I've seen it on walls mm. because um, through like videos, like um, Malcolm McLaren and um, and certain like other videos mm. but like uh, they're just painting on walls not on yeah. trains yeah 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 um, so like when I come back from New York that's when I really got into graph um, and that's when I started like seeing more you, you see like um, it break down the videos and you see graffiti in the background and I'm like oh, I, I want to do that you know you know, you, you copy stuff and then you, you that's how you get into it. Mm. And, um, and then, then I went back to New York in 86, 1986. Um, and because I'd already been out there already, I went with my parents and my brother and um, my cousin and my mum and dad. I went to my sister's wedding because my sister lives over there. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep going over to New York. Ah, and, I've okay. got, and I've got a family friend that lives over there in the Bronx as well. At the time, and I used to stop with him a lot. Yeah, well, that's a route to passage and a half, you know, like, you lucked out. Right? <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. So, like, so going back to New York in 86, when I'm really into graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, New York, I'm here, give me your graph. <laughs> so, like, so, like, so I know about the trains and everything like that, so I'm like, my sister lives in uh, Long Island where there's no, like, trains. Yeah. So, but my friend, he lives in the Bronx and uh, my sister got married and my mum says, right, um, they stopped over there two weeks and my mum says, uh, do you want to stop over a bit longer? I says, well, how long can I stop? She goes, well, you can stop six months. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm stopping then. <laughs> <laughs> so Make my bed, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I stopped, so I stopped six months. So um, That must have been insane. Six months yeah. of just study, basically. Yeah. So, like, my sister lives in um, Long Island, so I said to my sister, she was right, um, I'm going to visit my me, um, me friend in the Bronx. So I, I got a subway map out, I had a look how to get there, because she never took me. Yeah. I just got on the um, Long Island Railroad into Manhattan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. Uh, caught the two train up to the Bronx. <laughs> Casual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bit too casual. Yeah, no, a bit too casual, but, you know, you, you just fit, you just, I just thought, I, I, I fit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I caught you up to the Bronx, like, and went up to his house, I thought, right, um, he was at school, I thought, right, uh, I'm just going to go down to East, East 180th and wait on the platform and take some pictures of some trains, twos and fives coming along all day. Right, talk to me, what was it like when you, I mean, obviously you'd seen a lot of trains, but to be in that environment, the first time you see a train pull up with your own eyes, what was that feeling like? Well, I had my camera with me, and you you you, sh you, sh you literally shake. You literally shake, thinking, "What's going to be on this train here? What's going to be on it?" 
and you just watch oh it pulling in, just, and you just think to yourself, I've got, I've just got to get a good shot of this train. <laughs> Bro, that would have just, yeah, yeah. An abundance of names. It could be any given person on any day that had painted some. You, you the mind bog, just standing there waiting for. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, I know. I know, I've, I and I took loads of, and loads of pictures. I mean, um, the most upright at the, at the time were um, D. Row, um, COD, Children of Death, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. Nine, Wayne. Um, well, Wayne writes uh, No as well, and uh, Hymns. Hymns, <laughs> yeah. Them guys were up. DC3, um, Duster was still painting trains, Cope 2. Got some cope as well. Yeah, so, well, some like um, his early like um, stuff, cause like this was like in 80, 84, um, 86, This mm -hmm. is like eight, some like early stuffers as well. So um, I mean, there was some same trains I took. Mm. What was the dust? What was the dust piece like? Um, it was him and I think it was him and Scene. I think it might have been a cycle. <laughs> Hold on, this rolled in. <laughs> oh I think it my. might have been a cycle. What he did. God, you make them eyes water. In, That's fucking in, bonkers. Yeah, yeah, I got a mad scene one as well. Um, uh, the uh, the duster um, psycho one that was done in like pinks and yellows with um, a couple of characters in between. Fuck's sake! Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, so this was six months of just yeah back to back research. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I ended up meeting Dero. And um, nine and uh, and Wayne. No way. I was just on a platform one time, and the uh, they came along. Was, and, um, what were they like? What were these characters like on? Because obviously, well they, were, well, they were young. You've they got the accent. You've got an accent now, and you're going out, <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, it, the mind blew in, in a way. to like, why is a right from England yeah, yeah, in yeah. the Bronx? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, you know, on his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but they took me places where to paint. Um, there were um, a place where they took me underneath the, I think it was underneath the, I think it was a flyover or somewhere. Two, three, yeah, 238. Um, 238. Yeah, it's like, you had to go down um, this banking over like X amount of um, train lines mm. uh, to get to these walls underneath the, um, underneath the flyover. And, oh, yeah. uh, Painted down there. That's where I did my first piece in uh, in New York. It was um, it was oh, right inside at the time. S Y D E, and I did a silver. It was a silver with red outline and um, bits of black filling in on it. Nice side, yeah. Mm. That was that was my name. What I took over to New York at the time, and then I come back as a uh, such destruction. Really? Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> because. That's what Get was, to that, know. That's what I was uh, going to be causing when I got back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you just built up all of this intel, experience, mm. connection. Mm. That's just been like night and day, man. But it doesn't end there because um, meanwhile I was over there, I went I went to scene shop. That's what, that's what, that was the tattoo the, shop yeah. as well because there's two, right? Uh, this was before he had his tattoo shop. This is when he had his, when, when he was doing his... Um, T-shirts and stuff like that, airbrush. What was it like in there, walking into there? What was the environment like? Well, like, you know something, I had to walk through half of the Bronx to get there. Because <laughs> it's not... It's, it it's became a like it's it's a US embassy by the time a, you got it's there. A dis, get me it's, in. A, it's a distance from the train station. And um, when I went there, it, it was just... It was like a... If I remember right, it was like a small sort of like shop... And um, I got missed a T-shirt done. I don't know why, but I never got myself done. I, I, I didn't get myself one done. So Miss got all the luck. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Charming. <laughs> yeah, he got. He asked me to get him a T-shirt, and I got him a T-shirt done. So. Um, but hold on, you you had the you were in the manner. You were in the yeah. the, the the scene mecca. Mm, mm. And what then, else was he selling in there? Was he selling others, like it, paint and stuff? Uh, no, he just he was just doing T-shirts. That's mad. Just doing airbrush T-shirts at the time. I mean, because that's how we... That, but basically, that's how we started um, his business, really. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Doing T-shirts. Um, and then he's just... He got um, into tattoos and... Well, now he is where, where he is now. 
But, um, yeah, I think he's got potential. He's uh, he's, he's mm. doing all right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that guy, doing, he he seems to be doing all right. Yeah, yeah, he's doing all right. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but I love New York. Would you have stayed? I would have stayed, but I wanted to come back because he just wanted to tell everybody or show everybody all this cool stuff what you've got and all these photos what you've got and everything like that because like people always ask why you stop over there and I'm like it weren't an agent for me to stop over there yeah because you would have held you would have changed your whole personality is that what you mean from an age point of view you were too impressionable um I think it was because getting into graph at the time I mean really into graph and you want to get back and and uh, and and basically show everybody what's what's happening over there yeah. because not everybody knows what's happening. I mean, I've seen Style Wars um, and, uh, and 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 Subway Art, yeah. but it's not like how you want to tell it. You know, what I mean, you, you you just want to say, "Oh, I've met this person, I've met that person, I've met C," you know. Mm. Um, your own interpretation, basically, yeah, isn't it? Rather yeah. than what people are seeing in the in the media. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so, but I've been back loads of times since then. Um, met up with Scene again. Um, he even did. He were doing comics at the time. This time, I don't know if you heard about them comics. They're uh, Phony Baloney comics. We shall do some research. Yeah, do some research on <laughs> Phony phone, phone Baloney comics. Um, wow. Um, yeah, he were doing comics. Yeah. I've, in fact, I've got one. Um, he gave me one, uh, one of the first editions. <laughs> um, scene transcends into Americana. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You a mag, a comic, a T-shirt, canvases, mm -hmm. and I get that he was never really into hip hop in that sense. And you and there's but there's something about his style which it goes down in like, you know what I mean? You could see it in, in an episode, you know. A, the film Grease. Yeah. It's that kind of iconicness, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm. If, in fact, you can see his sort of like style. If you ever get to read one or look at one and see the characters in it, you'll. So if you open it up and look, look at it, you'll think, Scene's done these. It's just got that style to it of all yeah, the characters because um, the one I've got, it's rats against pigs. Rats are the criminals. Pigs are the cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. so, Connotations. Yeah, so um, that's what the uh, the characters are um, about in it. So, um, but you can see the style, scenes, style in them. Wow. Mm. Need to cut me one of them. I mean, I bet they're rarity. I mean, you, 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 you went in at a time where these things were just, um, they were there already, ava already available. Mm -hmm. Um, looking back on it now, you've got some like legacy pieces there that just would they'll stand the test of time. Yeah, yeah. I've, New York, it's just I met loads of writers. I'm, I'm loads of friendly writers over there. I mean, uh, like there's um, like the Tats crew. Mm. Um, I'll type bio. Good, good man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, I would got in. I would got in with the Tats crew because. Um, we uh, we used to have this like festival in Sheffield called the Freedom Festival. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, and um, we got them to come over. Um, BG and uh, Bio came over for that, um, and they painted, and uh, and I basically took them around. Um, they came from my house to my house for like dinner, Sunday dinner one time. <laughs> 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 so like every time I go back to New York I always make a beeline for the Bronx and go and see them mm. um, being out with them um, they're fun yeah they just seem to be like they should have like a a, a proper like mini dog you know like the Osbournes but it should be the tax crew <laughs> do you know what I mean it's totally they're fun yeah. they seem like a lot of fun yeah so like when I went over when I went back to New York they took me out and um, I went up to the Bronx and I met up with them and so like I left with them and uh, we drove to Manhattan and uh, we sat in the back of the car and like um, they're smoking and like you get that passive smoking and like, you're looking through the, I'm looking through the window and mm. going down the freeway and you're just looking at Manhattan skyline at, at night time going past and I'm like, 
<laughs> just thinking, look at how big this place is. Yeah. They could drop me off here and I wouldn't know where the hell I was. Mm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. them guys are fun, like, we went to titty bars and all sorts. Really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I'm saying. <laughs> the podcast, the real stories come out, right? Um, yo, uh, let me circle back around that skyscraper moment. Because to a, to a young person, any city, whether it's New York or Sheffield, and I was actually speaking to the whole type Danny Cans because we were talking about this earlier on. It's like the, the magnitude of certain cities, and when you're young and mm -hmm. you've got such a desire to conquer it, mm. sometimes it can be so overwhelming, can't it? Yeah. But it's best foot forward, isn't it? It's okay. I'm going to tackle this, and uh, yeah. piece by piece, brick by brick, build yeah. the house, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, that's exactly it. And uh, you just wonder to yourself, like how some rats can get all city in New York and. Uh, how vast it is as well. Because mm. um, getting all city in New York must take years. Yeah. Coming back from there <clears throat> with the newfound intel and applying it along and alongside... I mean, you're creating foundations for Sheffield, bro. Mm. Like, you literally... Do you, if it weren't for, like, so you, Mist, and a handful of others, you know, Fister wouldn't have... There wouldn't have been a full cycle of understanding mm. and... Like principles, I mm. feel. I mean, and I'm not from Sheffield. This is just from conversations I've had uh -huh. and the basic understanding of the scene. You were one of the forefathers, and that intel I think has helped the reverberation of, yeah. of more writers mm. even today. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like um, it just it just kick started Sheffield um, when I came back because. Everyone just seemed to go like mental, and we, we were just like out painting all the time. And mm. um, writers were coming from uh, out of town, you know, to um, to paint. I mean, like uh, we had we had places to paint, but it were places that were going to get knocked down. So um, we were allowed to do it. Mm. We used to like um, go there every Sunday and paint mm. piece. Uh, some writers, um, well, toy writers might being a little bit reluctant to like not go down there when we were down there, but um, that's life sometimes. And <laughs> yeah, were you notorious in that respect? Was it was the was there a level of fear from the toys? Is like yeah, I think, well, nobody. Uh, I don't think nobody liked the act back then. <laughs> 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 nobody liked the act back then because um, everybody, um, well, everybody, got, everybody probably would have got tax buyers at one time. I mean, like. It's, there's some writers now who are, probably, who are good friends mm. um, still remind me about um, how I were back then. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> uh, there's a writer called um, uh, Cost. He's, when, uh, when I first... Oh, Cost. Yeah, yeah, respect. Um, sorry about that. But <laughs> I, I made him stand to attention for an hour meanwhile I painted. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, oh, mate. After, after he um, took his paint or oh, searched his pockets, frisked him or whatever. Um, uh, big up seven. Uh, Contact seven. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not going to give you back your head in eight fifty. Oh, my God. So, you, this, you know, like the, this is a far cry from the gentleman I, I know I'm talking to here. This is revelationary in a way. I'm like, so you were really like, on them like that? Yeah, yeah. We, we were... I think we were pretty ruthless back then. Really? Yeah, yeah. Tell me more. <sighs> to what levels were, was it? I mean, you know, because I know, you know, I think, I think we've all concluded that the entry holes of criminality lie within certain e elements of graph. You know, it's the mm. gateway to certain things, and you know, but how close to the wire did it go? Like, were you like formidable? Were you like a tour de force on the street? Was it like? Yeah, nobody like nobody. Um, <laughs> well, put it this way, um, I think toys back then, uh, writers back then, if the souls come in, they'd uh, had the paint or the the pens or whatever. Really, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll give them a good frisking to see what they've got on them. It's funny you say that because Jewel from New York, he I had a podcast with him, and uh, he was like, you know, back in the day, nowadays, if you say I'm a writer, it's oh yeah, what do you write? Back then, if you said, oh, I'm a writer, it's like, right, you're getting fucking taxed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's, how, that's how it was. That's how it was yeah. because um, we didn't... We didn't um, have any income. 
we had to get his paint from somewhere. Mm. We had to get his pens from somewhere. Um, if it weren't from shops, mm. it was from like other writers, um, and uh, that's how it were. Sheffield, though, um, north of e north of England, the impact that it must have had. To some of the old school shopkeepers, you know. I hate to cite open all hours, but I could imagine there was a couple of shopkeepers like that, you know, that had no idea what was coming to them. They didn't. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little story. In the elite artists, we, had a, we, we got this um, legal job to do one time. Yeah. And um, writers, us writers used to have, like, head bags to go out racking, yeah. rack, to go out racking with. So um, we got to this, uh, we got to this um, car shop, Charlie Brown's. And um, we, we go, we're walking and says, right, um, we need to buy some paint. Mm. We want to spend X amount of paint. Mm. I mean, X amount of money to buy some paint. Um, he's like, oh, yeah, a couple hundred pounds. He's like, chi I, 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 I can see the dollar yeah, signs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll, like, ra rack a paint. So, like, I said, all right, we'll have one of these, put one on the counter, one in my bag, one on the counter, one in my bag. Uh, Fill the head bag up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. one for you, one for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and, and we used to go in there all the time and do that. Because we're talking in retrospect now. This doesn't happen nowadays in any form of graffiti, just so you know. These were talking in facts here from back in the day. Yeah, this, this is, we don't do that stuff anymore. We don't now. do that stuff. No graffiti no. writer does that. No, so no, just. No. Yeah. Doesn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, that's bonkers. I mean, you know, this, this the, the, the frivolous behaviour of, uh, of a time where no, um, no, um, no, not inhibitions. Karma wasn't a thing. No. Immortality. The mm, yeah. youthful wisdom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't care really much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we could get away with it. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about your painting technique. Because, you know, if you haven't checked the mini doc, uh, the Sheffield Report, um, there's a style that goes on in Sheffield. And of course, you know, the buck stops right mm -hmm. here. So talk to me about your style. Talk to me about, talk to me, talk to me about your. Uh, yeah, how you operate. Talk to me about your paint. Right. My style. I call it the transatlantic style. Nice. Because it's a blend of New York and old school English style from uh, the, like, we call it, it's like a bit from, a bit of style from like the London style, mm. from uh, from the Chrome Angels and, and stuff like that. But mm. um, a bit of a blend, because mm. I used to be going backwards and forwards to New York all the time, yeah. so that's why I call my style the transatlantic style, because it's a it's a bit of both, but mm. it's more, I don't, it's not more, it's not, it's, it's a bit of both. It's a, it's a blend, mm. because um, the letter technique is, kind of like New York, but the filling in is more English. Mm. Yeah, I get of, you, I get sort, you. Sort of style. Definitely. Like, when you say Chrome Angels and the fills, yeah, I feel you, particularly with some of the older stuff. Do you feel like, and I ask you this, I could ask a lot of people from the era, but when I think of your stuff, and also being the fact that you're not from London, mm -hmm. and there is a particular... Because a lot of people were heavily influenced by New York, but then they're also heavily influenced by Europe, and there, mm -hmm. was, there was definitely a moment in time where there was that transitional period. Mm -hmm. But um, do you ever feel like you're in a bit of an echo chamber whereby the thing, somewhere like Sheffield, where you've, you were forging the original look and now you're kind of going full cycle and you're kind of, oh, here's me again. I'm just, I'm just carrying on. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But I, you know something? Uh, my style, um, I try to... Perf I don't think I could ever perfect it because there's always something I want to do to it or... Is that yours? Is that yours? Oh, God, I don't want one of them. <laughs> you don't want it, but do you... You don't want it, but do you have it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have it. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I guess it's just progress, isn't it? Yeah. And if you've defined a, a, a style that... It's almost like if you label it transatlantic, then that gives you a clearer lineage of mm -hmm. how you repeat that yeah. into your... Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah, It's yeah. like if you're, if you're rock and roll, mm -hmm. you know, those basic principles of don't give a fuck, you know, or if you're politically driven, mm -hmm. hip-hop actually... Defining it as hip-hop actually helps the... The, the creative process, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Hip-hop graffiti, that's what I like. Yeah. Because 
that's basically the, the foundation of my um, yeah. graph, hip-hop graph. I think it's really easy for people to take away that fact in an age where graffiti becomes politicised and is social commentary and stuff and mm -hmm. a lot of grime MCs will be rapping in front of it. A lot of drum and bass DJs mm -hmm. were graffiti writers. A lot of um, people that love drum and bass also love graffiti. It's like, you know, man, like... OK, the styles and everything changes, but the roots, they need to be cemented. Yeah, they? yeah. I mean, cos, like, um, I mean, if I didn't have the background from where I come from mm. and how I started and everything like that, my style wouldn't look how it is now. Yeah. And it's a, it's a natural style to me, still mm. that. I mean, um, there's a lot of writers out there um, what, you know, do the names and everything like that, but I find... It natural mm. to do any letter. Mm -hmm. I can write any letter, mm. write anything, and uh, make it look good. That's why a lot of people. Um, that's why I've, I've done like canvases for people and stuff like that. You know, like um, name canvases and stuff. Um, and that doesn't. That, that's. I mean, obviously, you got your own definite, definitive style within mm -hmm. that. Like you say, you. It's almost like it's, it's almost like practicing any method in graphics. Like to be able to do the alphabet is like another huge landmark in mm. anyone's style. But do you don't mind putting someone else's name on a canvas and then not knowing entirely that it's you by default of a canvas? You know what I'm saying? If you, if if somebody saw one, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a that's a such such a desk canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking cool, isn't it? It's just got that look to it. I mm. mean, you can you can tell my style like from a mile away, really. That's, uh, that's such a good. And going back to my first question in the whole chat. Mm -hmm. It must be mad to think that how, what, three plus more decades, how many decades? You're sitting here now and you can self safely say, yeah, I'll just do that canvas and I just know and they will know. Mm -hmm. The ones who need to know will know mm -hmm. that that's my, that must be phew, mad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, shall we get to that? Yeah. Let's get to it. Well, right. Big up Danny Cairns. Yes. What's the question? Right. What's the question for the audience? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did a uh, canvas for tog Toddler T. Hold tight, Toddler T. Yeah, yeah my guy. Me brethren. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sheffield crew stand up. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, he lives around the corner from me as well, oh, you know. does he? Yeah, yeah, he's been on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, That's okay. my dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's one of the, you know, he's one of the most honest dudes out there. Like, yeah. you know, he, what you get in the, it's what it says on the tin is, that's, yeah. Mm. yeah so you've done him a canvas, like? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got it up in his uh, studio. Um, yeah, in fact, I did him three canvases, actually. Um, for, his, um, for his boys as well. For his kids? Fucking sick, yo. That's going to be a coffee talk and an half when I see him <laughs> next. It's been great. <laughs> Banging. See, and I, I think in an era of street art and, and the benefits and pluses and the negatives and such, there is this entry hole for ideas to be explored, particularly for the hardcore from back in the day. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a rude word. It's not a dirty word to say canvas in the same context as trains and street art. No. How do you feel about that? Spice alert. <coughs> Spice alert. Here he comes. <laughs> We're making him cough out here. Huh? I know it's... Uh, when, I, when I think about it, I, I, I mean, like, back in the day when you saw, like, um, I used to watch, uh, I think it was um, Style Wars, yeah. when there were writers on there doing canvases and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I thought to myself back then, I was like, well... That's uh, what they're doing. On, what they're doing stuff on canvases for, mm. and I think that's what you end up doing. Um, it just goes there, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's it's a progression because um, growing up and well, you, you, growing up, well, you've got to grow up. You've got no ch choice but to grow yeah. up and um, taking a risk. Is taking a risk, yeah. you know, like when you when you start a family and everything like that. But um, yeah. that's when you have to like calm down and uh, avenues like this seem to 
um, come into play at some point. Yeah. And let's not at this point discredit any of the hardcore that are out there in Sheffield. Hold tight, all the all the soldiers out there. Who? What do you want to see from the Sheffield scene? Like, what's your what? What would be like a core message that you would like to send to a scene that you were a proprietor of, in, in along with the aforementioned? What would you like to see from the scene in Sheffield? I would like to see from the scene, you know, um, writers, you know, what are, um, writers what want to explore more in the letters, you know, yeah. you know, do, do, put more effort into the um, into into the letter style, because yeah. the thing. Um, back in the 90s, early 90s, or mid 90s, when uh, when the when the rave scene came along, I think um, a generation got skipped because yeah. um, the main writers probably weren't painting at the time, and the new writers what were coming out mm. um, sort of lost the way mm. of Sheffield graph because like Sheffield had their own style. Yeah. Um, back in the uh, back in the eighties, and um, and I think that got lost. Mm. I think it got lost. Um, it happens. Like, yeah. yeah. The whole the rave era kind of wiped a lot of people's yeah. attention away. Yeah. Didn't yeah. It? yeah. It did. It did. And uh, and that's what I'm sorry about. In a way, because I mean, even I got sucked into that era. Mm. You know, um, a lot of writers got sucked into that era. In fact. Yeah, yeah, a lot of writers did. Yeah, some never came back to write again, though. Well, the thing was, I mean, over the, probably the last five years, a lot of old school writers have been coming back into graph. Mm. Been coming back into graph because um, I've been running these like graph jams up in Sheffield um, over a decade now. Mm. I started, um, started doing them over a decade ago. First, I just started inviting. Um, yeah, these have know, been going good as well, haven't yeah, they? they? Yeah, yeah. I started inviting local writers. Then I started inviting writers from out of town, you know, like friends who, um, who I grew up with, um, who I know. Um, started inviting them down, you know, like writers from well, from London mm -hmm. to Newcastle come down. That's right, you've had some premier writers come up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, had the uh, INSA down. Yeah. Um, got Newcastle writers down there. Uh, Inch and yeah. them guys. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. from a few writers from all over. Really, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't go into names because the, the list is endless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So check the check the wiki. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know Sheffield for me, I, I just hold a you know a sweet spot in my heart just for the writers that are out there now. Big shout out to yourselves, obviously all day. You know the the soldiers that are out there right now killing it. Um, uh, 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 there's too many to go into, all right, but you know, you know who you are. Don't be commenting me and DM me, why didn't you get so and so on? Because we'll be back. But um, that late 90s era where, you know, the graffiti wars, that, you know, that, I mean, I go online on YouTube and I've never seen, like, I don't know a town that has so many documentaries on it than <laughs> Sheffield, boy. Like, oh, it's so yeah, many. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the whole the, Fister era, this whole well, thing. Well, you, know. you got the Mist Easel era. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, the graffiti walls back then. Uh, there yeah. was, um, yeah, Mist, uh, uh, TDK. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these were, these were fucking, they were fucking beacons of, like, radar noise, just you know, radiating across mm. the UK. Like, I just, you know, it was around the Kings and Toys era as well. It just felt like all of a sudden media had, like, picked up on something, mm. you know? Yeah, so, um, I mean, there's always, there's always, there's always going to be graffiti walls in Sheffield with so many writers. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be wars and there's wars going on now, right now. Yeah. Yeah, wars going on right now. Always wars going on. Is that is that just is that is that a natural reaction that of the scene in Sheffield? Has it always been the case that there's in, the internal kind of beefs and fights and in the scene? Is is that just an is that is that just the nature of it? Um, it's a nature, 
But, I mean, some people um, go over writers yeah. and things just spark off and there's a spiral out of control. And yeah, yeah, okay. And, uh, and, and that's the be all and end all of it, really. Um, that's how wars start and they get really, really bad sometimes. Uh, really, okay. The the romantic in me also feels like that shows that there's heart and passion and there's a lot going on. You know what I mean? There's a yeah. lot. Of, there's a lot of good reason to keep your eye on Sheffield. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, from the outside yeah. looking in, it's a crazy time. And I wish to see best, man. I really, really appreciate you passing through, man. Oh, we're not done already, are we? I've not even talked about Tag the System when I went there and met up with... Um... Let's get into it. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to me. All right, OK. So, like, um, I went to New York. I can't remember what year it was. It was when um, there was an exhibition in Manhattan. Uh, I met up with the tax crew and they took me down to it. Um, it was called Tag the System. And uh, there were writers who had done trains and they did these little plastic trains that were about a foot long. Mm. And uh, each writer got one of these trains to paint and they had them on display. In cabinets? Kind of uh, yeah, and there were, there were hundreds of them. Some of them made oozes out of them. Um, some of them painted on white and put fairy lights in front of them, you know, like on Bridge mm -hmm. Street, you get the white train. like. And, but some of them had done whole cars what? With, with, with the names on, you know. Um, so they had these as canvases and they could do whatever they want? Yeah. They were, each, they were each given one and then, then they had them on display. Did you do one? No, because it was, um, it was an exhibition, it was a gallery. But I've got, I've got one of them trains. I've never heard of this, this, this event at all. Yeah, it's called Tag the System. I've got one of these trains. Um, Bio gave me one. It's only half of a train, but I've got one. I've not even painted it yet and he gave it me about... Seven years ago, <laughs> and I've still not got, and I've still not got round to painting it. <laughs> Can I ask you, like, I will do it one day. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. And is your? It begs me to ask, like, what's your? What's you must have so much memorabilia in your yard. There must be just so much stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've got loads. I've, I've I've got like scenes, calling cards when he had his shop. Um, in the Bronx, when he was doing his airbrush T-shirts, because that's what's advertised on him, he had these little calling cards. That, some of them were white, some of them were fluorescent orange. And it had, like, a B-boy character on, stood up with a spray can. Mm. He had a B-boy camera um, can. B-boy character stood up with a spray can. Mad. Oh, shit. There they are. There they are. Yeah. Um, you have to take me a photo of that. Why? Yeah. So, um... I, and I brought loads of them and then gave them out to everybody, as, as you can see, like, yeah. Mister's got a, um, got some. Um, but, yeah, back to the tag, the system. Mm. Um, so, as well as the... Uh, the it was at this, um, this gallery. So, it was upstairs in this gallery. There was a bar underneath. Mm. So, they, they got the gallery upstairs. So, I, I had only... I had one of them stupid Nokia... Mm. What what they called um, twenty? It were shitty Nokia. Mm. What what even made to take pictures? But mm. it took it took pictures. But you try to download any of them pictures now, and they they're so pixelated when you try to blow them up, mm -hmm. they just get distorted. That's how that's how bad it is. Wow. Yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so like, and, and scene came down to that as well. I met scene, scene were down there, Cope 2 were down there, um, um, T Kid were there, Odd Blade were there. Um, you're just in amongst royalty, that is yeah, fucking every, 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 they were like everybody were there who were, um, because well, they, they had all their trains on display as well, so, um, they're gonna show up, yeah. And then they had like an after party as well underneath in a, in a bar, um, where there was a free bar, I thought. Yeah. Have some of that. <laughs> I'll have some of that. <laughs> so yeah, so um, that's where that's the first time I met Corp, Corp Two. There, Corp Two and T Kid. Um, there was um, talking in the corner, so I, like I had, I had a few words with him. And then um, uh, Crazy Legs were there. Um, well, the whole tax crew were there because <laughs> I went down with them. Um, but you know, when you've had a bit to drink and everything like that, 
you know, there's a, a cipher starts um, forming and, um, you know, people start to break dance. Crazy legs is break dancing or all that. Of course, because he's I've, there, you know. I've, you had, I've, I've had a few <laughs> JDs at this time and I thought, well, I can take him. Oh, no, my God, you had it. <laughs> Shut up, really? You yeah. jumped in? Oh, my God. <laughs> You're like the first person I've heard to like challenge. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. So I did like you know did, did like a little fusion, uh, did a little like roulette flare roll, and uh, came up with a pose. Looking <laughs> amazing! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. This is you know this is the thing with with hip hop is anything can pop off at any time. Mm. That's the thing, and you've just got to have your skills ready. You've just got to have your you just got to know your abilities and just be ready for it, isn't mm. it? Yeah, and you got like um, Howard Nozum shouting, yo, English, English, pointing like. <laughs> and you're just like, yo, I mean, I don't care where I'm from right now. I'm in my element. But... Like, and, and, yeah, it's a bit of that Dutch courage, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah. I wouldn't have got up there if I wouldn't have uh, had a JD or two. Mm -hmm. but eras man but you know it's like a one-off you got you you gotta you gotta take it really. you gotta take an opportunity 100 percent. do you think enough people take those opportunities like you know if you see something take it in it that's mm. a real you only, you only live once you only live once yeah. so um if you're in a situation like that take it go get it go for it then you won't have any regrets and then you'll have some stories to tell like i have that's right that's right any regrets anything you regret i regret the rave scene Really? And <laughs> falling into that era. <laughs> really, do you? Yeah. You're not the only one that says that, to be fair. Mm, I regret that. Yeah, why? Because I would have carried on doing graph. Oh, okay. I, would have I would have carried on... I would have carried on doing graph. I would have, you know, do, do, doing that generation. Yeah. What wouldn't have got lost? I bet a lot of cold fucking writers had just disappeared. Yeah. Isn't it? You know. Yeah. But in that rave scene, such you does know, such in, in that in that in that rave scene, I did start DJing. Okay, so this is where this is coming. I couldn't read it. So yeah. okay, so and you got into the DJing yeah. drum bass. Yeah. Well, first of all, it was uh, well, it was like sort of. I started off doing techno, and then I then I moved on to um, jungle. Or Ragga Rave, not your Ragga Rave at, start, at, at first, and then into Jungle, and then... Uh, what was your DJ name? Same name what I've got, Such nice. Des. No, nice, nice. I thought, why change it? Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody knows me as that, Yeah. so I'll just keep that name. It's good, fuck. Dude, like, then this is... But, but if this was a commodity and a thing, how come you didn't wish you hadn't done it? Graffiti is my passion. Graffiti is my passion, really. I mean, um... When I was DJing, I mean, that, there, was, there were a lot of DJs out there, you know, there were a lot of DJs competing for, like, um, spots on um, on decks and stuff like that, but um, my brother did it, my brother yeah. was doing DJ, that's how I got into it, um, DJ EZD, respect my brother, um, and that's how I got into doing uh, DJing, and I did it for a while, mm. I still do a bit now, if... if uh, if a job came up or something like that, I'd do a bit now. But I've still, I'll still play that old school, that era. Yeah, that era from like um, mid early nineties. That's just coming back though. Mm. Well, you know, to find me if anybody wants to hire me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I find it interesting. Yeah, I, I, with 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 DJing, it's often. The more competition there is, and if you've got a passion for something, then you just drive it mm -hmm. through it all, don't you? You cut through. But if the if if you feel f for a second like there's any sort of resistance in your in your in the wake of doing something, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, a lot of that is, um, perhaps a small percentage of you just not being as passionate about it. Mm. It's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like I said, like uh, graffiti has always been in my heart. Really, I mean. I mean, look at me now. I've been 30, probably... Let me, let me try and work this out. Mm -hmm. It's about 35 years, 36 years I've mm. been doing graph. Mm. Amazing. Mate, 36 years, boy. Yeah. 
That is a long time. What's the future? I'm still going to pin until my hand falls off. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> or get arthritis or whatever, but I'm still going to... I'll just use that hand. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Got two of everything around here, you know what I mean? Brother, thank you so much for... for I mean, I'm not going to catch my train, but thank you oh, yeah, so respect. much. For my, thanks so much for passing through, my brother. Uh, thank you for coming up. Yeah, man. Uh, let's do more. Yeah, definitely. Let's do more. Definitely, definitely enjoyed it. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun, though. Yeah, don't you? done, right. <laughs> yeah, he had it. He said it. Killer Killer podcast striking again. Big shout out. Such dead. Hold tight, my brother. Ooh. Respect. Ooh. Killer Killer podcast striking a vengeance. Sharing is caring. You know what it is. Hold tight. All my Sheffield crew will be back, all right? No sleep. Sharing is caring. Now that he was out of fashion. Peace. Peace. Gang, a ding dong.